winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. It's the red skin report. So, so, so is everything red skin in the source? The 2012 Washington Redskins, your NFC East champions. The Redskins Report. Welcome, Redskins Nation. This is the Redskins Report. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. Here to chronicle the first week of free agency, we basically covered everything that has occurred in the first week of free agency, the Washington Redskins. Our beloved skins have done a great job, however, of holding on to our stuff. Guys like Corey Lichtensteiger, Rob Jackson, Darrell Young, Tyler Columbus. We'll talk about that here in a second. These guys will all be back. Sav, Rocca. We've done a great job of making sure that we get our stuff back. Nick Sundberg. So it's always nice when you can hold on to guys that you value. And you have to be able to take care of the guys in-house first and foremost. Now, we have had one departure. It did sting. Lorenzo Alexander, a.k.a. One Man Gang, no longer a Washington Redskin. And that hurts because, again, he was a core Redskin. He was a guy that was supposed to be here. He was a guy that was supposed to play the majority of his career, if not all of it, in Washington. He wasn't supposed to be wearing another uniform. And it's really unfortunate because it should not have went down this way. But again, the Redskins felt like this is the amount of money that we're looking to pay you. This is the money that you've commanded out on the market. There was a slight difference in the two. And Lorenzo Alexander felt like he was worth more to the Redskins. They didn't have more to give, or at least not in their estimation. They probably had enough money to give Lorenzo Alexander. But when you're trying to re-sign guys, when you're trying to still go out and get Fred Davis... You're trying to go out and bring back guys that you really perceive as being difference makers on your football team. You got to draw the line somewhere. They did that with Lorenzo Alexander. He's not back. So we did lose one guy. But for that one loss, we got a lot of guys back. And so I'm not here to cry over spilled milk. But I just spoke to you about Tyler Columbus coming back. And look, I'm not going to act like I'm extremely giddy or anything of that nature. But I did say from the outset of this thing, What's the point of not bringing him back? I understand that he's not a starter and you didn't look at him as a starter. He ended up being thrust into that role and you decided to go with that. But let's be honest here. The Redskins are a team that you don't have any money. So you can't go out and get a guy like Eric Winston. You can't go out and get Sebastian Ballmer. So what are you really looking to do at the tackle position? Rich Tandler got on my case and he was really aggravated at the fact that I asked him about Tyler Columbus. And I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, my whole question from the start of this thing was, if you can't afford to go out and upgrade the position, why not just get the guy that you had last year back? You went out and got Tony Pashos. You went out and got Jeremy Trueblood. These guys aren't upgrades at the tackle position. So my question was, is Tyler Columbus that expensive? Is he asking for that much money that we can't re-sign him? I, I wasn't understanding. They went out and re-signed Tyler Columbus. I'm a happy man because at the end of the day, I just want continuity. I just want the same line back. If you're not going to upgrade it, give me the same stuff back then. All right? If you're not going to give me something brand new, I'll just take my old goods and move on. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm not going to take someone else's trash and make it my own. 
Why not let me keep my stuff? That's like you having a car that runs. It's okay. It's solid. It gets you from point A to point B. You like a new car. But if you can't afford a new car, why not just keep the car that you have already? You don't have to make payments on it. It still runs. It still gets you from point A to point B. Why trade your car in for a junker of someone else's that may break down on you? At least you know what you're getting out of your car. You know that it works. It may not be the prettiest thing on the lot, but it works. It gets you from work, back to home, from home to the store, and back to the house. So why not keep your car? You know what you're getting out of your car. Now you go and get someone else's lemon, someone else's junker, and all of a sudden it breaks down on you. So that's all I was saying was, if we're not getting an upgrade, why not just get Tyler Columbus back? The Redskins saw fit to go out and get Tyler Columbus back. He is now back in Washington. I think that's a really good move. Now we have depth. And you have to remember, Jamal Brown is gone. Jordan Black is gone. We needed depth along the offensive line. And so I guess True Blood and Pashos are guys you can throw into the mix. They'll be competing maybe for that right tackle position. Still, because I don't think just because we brought back Tyler Columbus, it's his job and his job alone. This is going to be an open competition. I still want to see guys like Tom straight out of Compton get an opportunity. I still want to see guys like Maurice Hurt get an opportunity. I want to see what Pashos has to offer, what True Blood can do in a Redskins uniform. And so it's going to be an open competition for that right tackle position. But at the end of the day, that's all you could ask for. Give me all the stuff that I had last year back. Throw them into the fire and see if the same five emerge as our starters. You know, four out of the five are going to be our starters. We know from right guard over is all going to be the same. That right tackle position is the only question on that offensive line. And so good to know, though, that in a pinch, Tyler Columbus is back. And if we go in that direction, we'll have all five of our starters from the line a season ago back on the field. And that's what I call continuity. So now you look at the Redskins and moving forward, they have some work to do. And yes, they still don't have any money. That has not changed. But if you're the Redskins, there are several different avenues that they have to explore. Again, restructuring deals is probably the way to go. And it's probably what's going to end up happening here shortly. And so I think that they'll restructure a few deals, free up a little bit more cap space, and then they'll go and try to get a guy like Fred Davis, who they are talking to right now. Actually, the Redskins on Sunday were out talking to the agents of Fred Davis and Rex Grossman about potentially bringing these guys back in the fold in Washington. And so I think that's solid. Again, if I had my way, Rex wouldn't be back. But right now, the position that we're in, we don't have a choice because we can't count on Robert Griffin III to be back for the opening game of the season or the first two games or the first three games or the first four weeks. We don't know. So you got to have two quarterbacks. We can't just go into the season with Kirk Cousins and leave it at that. And so I think if nothing else, we got to bring Rex back for just that reason, just knowing that we have two quarterbacks, two able-bodied quarterbacks on the roster. Once Robert is able to come back and we still have Kirk Cousins, that's when you get rid of Rex Grossman. But it's a shame because I'm, I think that we are ready to just have two quarterbacks on the roster. I don't think we need to hold another roster spot for a quarterback. I don't think we need to divulge any more money into the quarterback position. I think we have what we need at that position once Robert Griffin III gets back healthy. Speaking of which, and I want to go off on a side tangent and come back to what I was just talking about. Because as we all know, I love to go off on tangents. Robert Griffin III was recently talked about by Mike Shanahan. And Mike Shanahan said, look. He's not going to be playing for us until he's 100% healthy. Music to my ears. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. And normally, I don't like speaking for everyone. I don't like speaking for other people. I can only speak for myself. But I feel really confident in saying, and I can speak for all of Redskins Nation when I say this. We don't want to see Robert Griffin III on the field until he is 125 percent healthy. I feel like we got ourselves into this conundrum by putting him on the field when he wasn't ready to really perform in the offense. And look, if your quarterback tells you he can go, you stick him in the game and you don't ask questions. But he wasn't healthy. We put a lot of the onus on him. We had him out there running the football. We should have just had him behind the center throwing the football and not running all over the place. But that's another story for another day. All that matters is that Mike Shanahan knows that we can't put this guy on the field unless he is a hundred 
and 10%. 125%. I'm talking about the knee looks as good as it did when he first came to Washington. That's what I want to see. He's able to run around, do all the things that he was able to do when he first got here. And not the guy that we had in the latter portions of the year into the postseason that was hobbling around. We need the full Robert Griffin the third on display. And this season, the approach needs to be different, and I think it will. He won't be running as much. He won't be doing a lot of quarterback options and reads and things of that nature. It'll be more of a traditional offense, but it will still have the element and threat of the run because we need to have him be able to still have teams off balance and have them scared of the threat of him running the football. But I think he'll do a lot less of it. And yes, you know, the Redskins will always argue that his injuries came when he kind of ad-libbed and left the pocket on his own, not when he actually had a run that was called. And that may be true, but we need to limit the amount of hits that he takes. And so if we can get him running the football less and throwing it more, I'm all for it. And I think that's what they'll do. But I said all that to say this. The Redskins have their heads on straight. And I needed to hear that. And I'm pretty sure that was the agenda the whole way through was that he won't play until he's 100% healthy. But I kept hearing that he's ahead of schedule and that we feel like he'll be ready for week one. I don't want to hear anything about that. I just want to hear that he's healthy. I don't care if that happens in week six. I don't care if that happens in week four. I don't care if that happens in week two. I don't care if he's ready to go at week one. I just want to make sure that he's 100% healthy and that there's not a question as to whether he's 100% healthy or not. I don't want to worry about, is my franchise quarterback being put in jeopardy like he was last season because we want him on the field for the beginning of the season. That's not important. The next 10 seasons of Washington Redskins football is what is important. And if Robert Griffin III isn't a part of our next 10 seasons of Washington Redskins football, then we have a serious problem. And our next 10 seasons of Washington Redskins football won't be joyous seasons of Washington Redskins football, which is what we want. We want Super Bowl championships. We want the glory days to return. We want to be able to sing hail to the Redskins to every team in the league and hoist the Lombardi trophy while doing it. And the way to do that is to have Robert Griffin III under center, slinging the football around and being healthy enough to run when need be. And so I feel like Having him be healthy is the most important thing. It trumps everything. And I feel like I can speak for every single member of Redskins Nation when I say that. And so I feel comfortable saying that. And that was refreshing to hear Mike Shanahan say, look, he's not playing until he's 100% healthy. That's all I needed to hear. I didn't want to hear anything else about, oh, he's ahead of schedule. Oh, he'll be ready for week one. Looks like he's on target for week one. Don't care anything about that. Only thing that I want to hear out of anyone's mouth is the health of Robert Griffin III, and how he won't be on the field until we know for certain he's 100%. So let me go back to the Redskins talking to the agents of Rex Grossman and Fred Davis. I'm really not that concerned with Rex Grossman. I want to focus on Fred Davis because that's the guy that I think we need to have back. And over the course of the week, they said that Fred Davis had narrowed it down to two teams, the Cleveland Browns and the Washington Redskins. Now, I'm not quite sure about this, but if I'm not mistaken, Fred Davis is from Ohio. And so Cleveland might be like going back home. I'm not sure about that. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we want Fred Davis back. I think Fred Davis wants to be back in Washington. And so I think we're going to get Fred Davis back. I feel really good about this. I didn't feel as strong about it before free agency started. I felt like we needed to get a deal done with him before it started, but we didn't have any money. Now I feel like we're going to find a way to dance around the numbers and get Fred Davis back. I think he wants to be back. We definitely want him back. We need him back. And I think that at the end of the day, the two sides will come together on an agreement and Fred Davis will be a Washington Redskin. I feel really confident about that. Can't put a percentage on it, but I feel really good about Fred Davis coming back. And I think Rex Grossman will end up being back, unfortunately, and look, I'm not a Rex Grossman basher or anything. I feel like he was solid for us. But I feel like we have everything we need at the quarterback position when Robert Griffith III is healthy. Only question is, when will he be that way? So until we know for certain that we have two able-bodied quarterbacks on the roster, you got to hold on to Rex. He knows the system. We don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on someone else. Rex is the guy that no one else wants Rex Grossman. <laughs> There's not another team in the league. That'll be looking to sweep him up once we cut him loose. So if we tell Rex Grossman, hey, 
go test the free agent market. I'm pretty sure he'll be sitting there come, you know, the start of camp if no one else snatches him up, which I doubt it. He'll be sitting there waiting for us to give him that phone call and say, hey, Rex, we need you to come back to Redskins Park and uh, be another arm in our camp and potentially sign back with the team until Robert Griffin III is healthy. So I look forward to us getting these guys back in the fold as I believe that they'll both be back with the Redskins in the 2013 season. In terms of Rex, though, I really don't know how long he'll be back because I feel like the Redskins could easily cut ties with him after they realize that Robert Griffin III is back. Maybe after Robert is back for about two games and they realize there's no setback, he's ready to go, maybe you go ahead and cut Rex at that point because then you'll have two good quarterbacks on your roster. You won't need another guy back there. And So I'm thinking that's what the logic will be for Rex Grossman and the Redskins in the 2013 season. So there you have it. I mean, really not a lot more news to discuss. I felt like the Robert Griffin the third comments made by Mike Shanahan was important to discuss. I also thought that getting Tyler Columbus back was more like validation for me because, again, I talked to Rich Taylor. He tried to make me sound like I was a clown for even thinking that we needed to go back and get Tyler Columbus. And so I've been talking to you guys about the fact that I thought we just needed to have him back for no other reason than continuity. And look, the guy was here last year. He started to play better toward the end of the season. Why break up a group that was playing pretty good football? If we don't have any money to go out and upgrade the position, why not deal with the evil you know then go out and get an evil that you don't? That's all I was saying. And so Redskins go back and get Tyler Columbus. Feel good about that. Well, then we'll see what happens for the Redskins moving forward. I just feel like a lot of things still are left unanswered. We don't have any answers at the cornerback position right now, neither at safety. And so who knows what the Redskins are doing in those positions, but we definitely need to address at least one of them. And I'm thinking corner is the one you have to address in free agency. I think safety, we can get a really quality safety in the draft at 51. I feel really confident about that, but I'm not too sure about cornerback, you know, and so we'll see what happens. We'll see what the Redskins decide to do in free agency. First things first, get Fred Davis back. Then we can worry about corner and safety and things of that nature. Get Fred Davis back. That has always been the goal since the start of free agency. That continues to be the goal until we hear Fred Davis is officially a Redskin once again. And so that's going to do it. I'm a Redskins fan etched in burgundy and gold. My Redskins spirit will never die. My Redskins spirit will never fold. Until we meet again, Hail to the Redskins and keep your eyes peeled for Redskins news. I think that something will be happening here with the Redskins here shortly. Whatever happens in any event, it'll be here in the Redskins report. Have a good one. See you later. The Redskins report.